Hello YouTube, I'm Tom itself. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the SRAW, or the SRAW, the Battlefield 4 Engineers Laser Guided Rocket Launcher. While it might be a little bit slow, the ability to precisely guide the missile all the way to your target means the SRAW is a good choice for taking on almost every vehicle, from boats to helicopters. The SRAW is something of an implausible weapon. Allow me to demonstrate by having it hit the back of this target while I'm laser designating the front of it. But more on the bizarre targeting and flight characteristics later. Right now, let's see how the SRA stacks up against the other launchers, and why I think it should be your go-to launcher as an engineer. As with the other launcher videos, I need to give a big thanks to Labby over at Simthic.com for a bunch of the stats. I'll link to that thread in the description. Also, I'm going to post the results of my SRAW damage tests over on Captain Cookie Crisp Reddit thread with a bunch of the other damage numbers for you, and I'll link that in the description as well. And as always, DICE likes to change stuff, and I am known to make a mistake occasionally. Any updates or better information I find will also be posted down in the description. Let's get into those numbers. The SRA has the standard starting ammo count of 5, and has the fastest reload of all of the launchers at 2.8 seconds. I keep misreporting these reload times, so I'm just going to put them all on the screen right now, and hopefully sort out any confusion. Let's talk about damage. Against scout and attack helicopters, the SRA is a one-hit kill. But given how maneuverable those helicopters are, it can be challenging to guide the missile to its target and you partly have to hope the pilot is just being lazy. Transport helicopters are easier to hit given that they're larger, slower, and not as maneuverable, but they're still quite the challenge to land a shot on. If you do, it'll be 72 damage and a mobility hit, making a follow-up shot a lot easier. The SRA is infantry's only real option in dealing with the AC-130. It'll be 4 hits to kill at 27 damage apiece. If you can manage to land a hit, quad bikes and jet skis are 1 hit kills. And now we get into the category of vehicles where how much damage you do depends on which side you hit, just like the RPG and SMA. This includes trucks, jeeps, and rib boats. The damage values are between those of the RPG and SMA, but in general everything is a two hit kill except for the side and rear of a truck where you'll need three shots, or like the SMA, a hit to the front of a truck and then the side or rear isn't quite enough to destroy it, though at that point you'll leave it with one health and it won't take long for that to just degrade away and explode anyway. Finally, we have our category of vehicles that it's not just the side that it impacts, but the angle of the impact that affects the damage, just like the RPG in SMA again. This includes the main battle tank, the LAV, the AA, the Amtrak, and the attack boats. And once again, the damage values for the SRA are between those of the RPG in SMA. The front of a main battle tank, 23 damage for the RPG, 21 damage for the SMA, and 22 damage for the SRA. The relationship is so consistent that the few that aren't that way make me think I need to go back and redo the tests. The attack boats are 35 damage on a side and 26 damage minimum. Uh, it seems like the front and back both do minimum damage and I did have a strange case where I did two times minimum damage just nailing it in the front I guess right between the two sides. <laughs> Kinda funny, I really wish I'd been recording. Obviously, the important question is, will it take more hits to destroy a vehicle with the SRAW compared to the RPG? It's hard to really summarize, say always it will take the same number, but there are going to be very few cases where it will take more hits to destroy a vehicle with the SRAW. So from a damage perspective, I don't see any reason to take the RPG over the SRAW. And if you could use the missile's guided capabilities in order to land a more square hit on the side of the armored vehicles, that could result in fewer hits to kill even. If you're not content to go after vehicles with your rocket launcher, the SRA is the choice for you, just because of how precise you can be with it. It has the same blast radius of all the free fire launchers, and have a lethal radius of about three-fourths of a meter, if I did my math right. Now we get to the one real downside of the SRAW, that is how long it takes to get up to speed, partly because of a slow launch speed and slow acceleration. You're out to 100 meters before it finally reaches its maximum speed, which is almost as fast as the RPG, but you're still going to lose a lot of the time you save with that fast reload to the travel time of the rocket, especially if you're guiding it all the way to your target. 
When acting under laser designation, the SRA takes on the same acceleration and maximum speed as the Javelin, making it nearly identical on this chart. When laser guided, there is no ballistic trajectory to worry about, and so the SRA is a good choice for extremely long range shots. When firing from the hip, you don't get the laser guidance, and the stats had me expecting something of a rocket propelled shot put and just to drop right to the ground even though the rocket motor was going. No, instead there is no ballistic drop even while hip firing. Still, there is the random spread from the hip fire you have to worry about, but at close ranges, where you're not going to need to guide the missile to its target, don't aim down sights, just reload and fire away. And this is where the fast reload of the SRA really stands out. When you're not spending the time guiding it to its target and having to worry about that slow travel time, the damage per second you can put out is absolutely astounding, and tanks won't know what's going on. I have to expect that one way or the other DICE is going to reduce that damage per second, either longer reloads or less damage. Right now, it just outclasses all of the other launchers. Speaking of things that are going to change, DICE has said they're going to remove the ability to guide multiple missiles in the air at the same time. For the SRA, you could have two, even three rockets in the air at the same time and have them all come down on the target right after each other. It made it very hard for the driver or pilot to get away from that. Multiple smoke trails are a big come kill me sign, and if you didn't manage to guide them all before they started timing out or hitting other things, you'd lose them, but still DICE decided that was too effective. Let's spend some time talking about the laser guidance of the SRA. Not the laser designation the recon gadgets can provide, but the regular old the missile's gonna go where I point it that the typical SRA shot has. The missile always knows where you're pointing that laser. Every time you aim down sights with that SRA sight, it points a laser, even though you can't see it, at whatever you're targeting. Even if it's the Sky Dome, the missile still knows where that is and it will head towards it. And if you stop targeting with the SRA sight, the missile will keep trying to go to the last point that was targeted. So if you know you've got something that isn't going to move or the missile is really close, go ahead and lower your sights, save your time, and the missile will keep going to the last place you pointed it at. As strange as always knowing exactly what your targeting is, it's the turning that is really funny. And it's what they do to try and make it feel like a wire-guided missile. One of the things that you'll often see end up happening is the missile will end up orbiting around what you're trying to target. So I'll go ahead and do this intentionally here. Now there's an equation for relating the speed, the acceleration, and the radius of that turn. And if I plug the maximum speed and the acceleration of the SRA in, I get a radius of 225 meters, which should take it almost 19 seconds to make an orbit. Clearly not what's happening here, it's somewhat about 20 meters in about 1.8 seconds. So the missile can accelerate some 10 times faster when it's trying to go to a point perpendicular to it, but when it's going straight forward it keeps going the same speed? That's kinda crazy. I should note that this is the same guidance system that tow missiles use, and they all have 10 seconds from launch until they time out and just explode. The only factor in how fast the missile turns seems to be the difference between the direction of the missile's travel and wherever the point it's trying to go to is. It means it's very easy to fall behind a moving target. For me, the best way around this has been to start off by leading my target and then guide the missile directly to the target as it gets closer. I've also heard people who are very talented with the SRA recommend trying to keep the missile directly between you and your target so that it overlaps it directly. I did not have as much luck with this method. Either way, the idea is largely the same. You want to guide the missile's path through your target rather than just to your target. Whatever method you use, it still takes a lot of skill, a bit of luck, and possibly some negligence on the part of the pilot. In the end though, I'll still take luck over skill any day. I looked at my stats yesterday and was surprised to find that I have the same accuracy rating with the SRA and RPG at 32%. I take a lot more crazy shots with the SRA, but I hit a lot more of the easy ones. But telling you that I hit 32% of the shots that I take at helicopters would be an outright lie. Even limiting myself to shots that seemed reasonably likely, I think 1 in 5 would still be stretching it a bit. But, if you'd like to take advantage of laser designation provided by gadgets like the Recon's PLD, well, the SRA can do that. Almost no randoms in public servers seem to use the laser designator, and so I was in a similar situation as I was with the Javelin. I can't test it on the test range, and while well, every empty server I tried, I couldn't connect to. 
However, for helicopters, Level Cap and Matsimio posted a video where they shot a whole bunch of laser designated SRAWs at helicopters. You get a good idea what's going on there. 60 damage against transports, 90 damage as opposed to a one hit kill against scout and attack helicopters. It is going to be a lot easier to get that hit with a laser designator as opposed to trying to guide the missile manually. When it comes to ground vehicles, I need to give a big thanks to Mortimer Krabs for being willing to hop into a bunch of games, laser designate a whole bunch of vehicles, and just let me see what happens, even though it wasn't always the smartest choice. When using laser designation, the s -Raw follows the same trajectory as the Javelin, popping up at first so it can come down on the target from above. This means that you'll usually be doing damage to the top hitbox of the vehicle, which we haven't talked about at all yet. It seems to be a copy of the rear hitbox. In general, I don't know, limited testing, it's the best I can say at this point. Unlike the Javelin, there isn't any straight damage increase for being laser designated, and the missile is still affected by the angle of the impact. So it's definitely not something you always want to use, or even wait for the one and a half seconds to lock on. If the guidance is great, but it may not be beneficial to your damage. Like a truck, if you hit the front, you'll do more damage to the front than you would if you use the laser designation to hit the top. As you may have already noted, this makes the tank a particularly inviting target for the laser designation. You still have to get around actor protection, but it can do over 50 damage. In fact, up to 55. I don't know how. I can't reproduce this in the test range, maybe just because I can't look straight down to get a perfectly square hit. Maybe there's some splash damage going on, but that was a 55 damage hit to that tank. The top hitbox on the tanks and LAVs is that turret and not just the flat surface on the top. That does significantly less damage. So while you could try to shoot a rocket up in the air and then bring it back down so it would land on that high value hitbox, it doesn't often work. It's particularly hard to target. But with the laser designator, it will often come down and given a bit of an angle, you'll see damage in the low 40s often. The SRA is a great weapon, especially in terms of damage and precision. It can get you in trouble at times with these slower flight times and with some tunnel vision while you're trying to guide it to the target. There are some scenarios where the RPG or small, if that's more to your liking, have a role to play that the SRA can't quite shoot and scoot or just to punish that helicopter pilot who flew just a little too low, too slowly, for just a second, but the SRA wouldn't have time to quite get there, the RPG or small might. But in general, the SRA is definitely my go-to launcher. Well, that concludes my engineer's launcher guides. I mean, I'd still take out the Stinger or the Igla if I needed to take down an aircraft, or heck, if I was going to be a passenger in a helicopter, I think I'd go for the law. Or I might just take out the Javelin for kicks. Eh, who knows? Why not? It feels very good to wrap this series up. I certainly enjoyed it. I hope you guys did too. I hope you learned something useful. And it's time to find some more nerdy battlefield topics to cover, isn't it? Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Man, front hitboxes, back hitboxes. The next thing I have to worry about is inside hitboxes. Hmm, that's a thing, isn't it? <laughs>